Hello and welcome to What It's Like. Today we're going to talk about a 2001 Honda Odyssey in the year 2021. Why are we talking about a 20 year old van now? If you haven't noticed, the car market sucks. You can't get anything. And I think a brand new 2021 Honda Odyssey with no options starts at around 30 grand. You could pick one of these up for under 2,000 if you're if you really look for them. And they're really reliable. A lot of people will say to stay away from this era a Honda Odyssey because of transmission issues, but if you just need a car to go from point A to point B, oftentimes it's a solenoid problem. Like this one has a bad solenoid, but we're getting into too much information too fast. We're going to do an in-depth review of a 2001 Honda Odyssey. We're going to talk about what it's like to own it, what it's like to drive it. Um, so without further ado, let's get into the review. These are what the new ones are going for. Um, I took this right off of Honda's uh, website. They start at $32,000 and they go up from there. The Elite is just a tick under $50,000, which is incredible for a minivan, in my humble opinion. Okay, getting back to the 2001 Honda Odyssey. This is the second generation of the Honda Odyssey, produced from 1999 to 2004. Um, they adopted the Chrysler styling minivan with the format in which there was sliding rear doors. Yes, you heard that right. The first generation Honda Odyssey had hinged doors in the back, sort of like an SUV. Back to the 2001 Honda Odyssey. In some lights and some angles, depending on how you look at it, it looks like a shoe. Now for an honest, in-depth, real-world review after 20 years of a 2001 Honda Odyssey. I didn't seek out and find the most pristine example like some car YouTubers usually do. This is a real world review of what these vehicles look like after 20 years of using them. Like check out the rust. The worst part of rust on my vehicle is by the gas tank. So if you're ever buying one of these, make sure that that's not rusted out. Um, they tend to rust in the uh, the quarters, the rear quarters rust pretty pretty easily, all the bottom pieces. When you open up the doors, make sure the doors aren't rusted out at the bottom where the um, the drainage, there's like, uh, there's drains in the bottom of the doors and they like to rust out right here as you can see. It didn't look like that four years ago, but they put calcium on the roads here so it eats the cars away. That's why they don't really make cars out of steel anymore here. Plastic works much better in combating rust damage. Silver with rust. That's how I describe it anytime they're like, hey, what vehicle are you in? Like it's silver with rust. But there's some more rust and some more rust. So if you're looking at getting one of these, just make sure that you look for rust. Even the plastic has rust stains on it. Like those bumpers are plastic. But these are all common areas where they tend to rust. Okay, moving on to the interior. All right, let's talk about interior buttons. So th this control here, these controls here control the doors. These ones control the mirrors. You got traction control, cruise control. Getting into the gauge cluster, they give you a tachometer, a speedometer, a gas gauge. Driving modes are park, reverse, neutral, D4, D3, 2, and 1 next to your temperature gauge. And then look down there, there's a little tiny Honda Odyssey icon. When you turn the keys on, it'll show you... If there's any doors that are ajar, they will turn up red. Seatbelt icons next to it, brake light. Over here, all the other lights are for traction control up here at the top. And then at the bottom, you have check engine light, battery light, and an oil light. When you turn the key, most of them go away. 
every Honda I've ever owned that was older than 2006 has always had the check engine light on and if the check engine light goes off then you start having problems moving over here you have the hazard hazard lights your clock we'll come back to the steering wheel you have a bunch of controls on the steering wheel this is for your radio you could change the channel from the steering wheel and the volume over here is for your cruise control settings You've got a bunch of switches on the windshield wiper stock this controls both the front windshield wiper and the rear windshield wiper over on this stock you have your high beams and your lights over here you gotta love the door panels they, they didn't put that much th this is literally cloth that's just they just glued to plastic and then in, in 20 years it just comes out and reveals the hideous panel beneath you got your door locks your door handle so they decided to chrome it out I'm surprised it didn't put cloth on that too This is the lock, the um, windows. The rear windows are actually vent windows. They, um, they don't go down, they just pull out. Moving on to the center, you have your heater controls. The AC in this, in this van is second to none. I've had a lot of different vehicles, I've owned Lincolns best AC of anything that I've ever owned you could control the rear climate control this controls the lights if you want the lights to come on with the door it's on that feature if you want the lights to come on now they're on or you could just shut them all off there's a radio a nice cubby for your phone and phone charger I think it's cool the the base button if you want to control the base I don't know if you can see that but it comes out and then you can turn it that's pretty cool same thing with that it, it reveals itself once it's pushed cup holders are right here nice storage cubbies This has window defrosters. So here's what it looks like with the center row intact. You got armrests here, which stained. Chairs are 20 years old. That's to be expected. They can recline and they can fold down. So if you have any larger stuff, this is uh, worth showing actually. So it can fold down like that. We'll go around to the other side and fold the other one down. Fold the center seat down. I don't know what you'd need to use that feature for, but you could fold all those seats in the back down and put stuff on top of it if you want to. This is what your storage situation looks like. You got a nice big indentation there where the seat goes. So as I mentioned earlier, if you fold this seat, if you fold that seat into the floor, this is your situation here. That's how much space you have. You actually have more space if you take out the center row seat and put this in place because you have the center there and you have the storage area here and it's easier to lift this seat out of the floor than it is to move these seats as I will demonstrate getting these seats out of here all right so this is what it's like to get these seats out of here right here there's a little tab and you pull it forward and then you tip the chair forward and then you remove it it's really easy it's just really heavy chair weighs probably a hundred pounds and 
and then you can see that that really opens it up look at how much space you have back here that is a five foot tall cabinet it's 32 inches wide 13 inches deep I make cabinets I have a small cabinet business and this is one that I made from scratch brand new just made the look old it's kind of a plug I guess notice the stains this is a work van and um, this is a really honest review of how these vans would look 20 years later but I'm going to show you something else that's cool so we could take this cabinet out This has three rows of seats. I took the center row of seats out for demonstration purposes. And reviews will show you that when you have the second row of seats in, show you how much space you have in between the seats with the third row in place. Without the second row, you actually have more space doing things that way than you do if you left the second row in. So the second, the third row comes, pulls up out of the floor like this. And there's your third row it also reveals you have this big in, indentation where the third row of seat where the third seat sat so you have all that space there plus you have all the space inside here this is almost what I call limo mode because they the back seat passengers sit so far back they have all this space here that you can put other things in which I'll now demonstrate so just for reference that's five foot tall you could fit another one off to the side of it if you had to and still use that seat I would say that you know if we did use that seat we would bungee the cabinet to the back of the seat so it wouldn't move around while driving So that's what that looks like. Plus it's a lot easier to just pull that up out of the floor than it is to keep the center seats out. The center seats are pretty heavy. They're probably like 75 pounds, maybe a hundred pounds each to move them out of the way. And then whenever you're done, say like you have a little kid or a couple of kids, it's way easier to just put that back in the floor than it is to remove the seats I will put adjustment for the chairs right here on the side they're fully adjustable you can recline them actually I'll show you Just sit down here in the chair you can move it front and back that's as far back as it goes you can move it up that's as far forward as it goes I'm six foot two so I'd want to move it all the way to the back and it's uh Reclinable. There's your recline position right here. You put the two armrests down. It's really quite comfortable. You got your own air conditioning vents up here. You, got, you can control your air conditioning from over here. Yeah, it's really, really nice and spacious. And then to get to the third row. All right, now to get to the back row, you just climb in through here. And you just sit down back here and there's there's lots of room for me back here lots of headroom i can move over here and i'm about the average size person about six foot tall there's the nice little coat racks up in here seat belts you got your own climate vents back here your own lights which the lights only work whenever the lights are on up in the dashboard and they're not on right now 
everybody in the back has a pocket on the back seat in front of them back here you even have pockets back here to store stuff got your climate vents here lights nice place to hang your coats the vents are only operational from the front seat the passenger on the right side has two cup holders the passenger on the left side only has one but they have this nice storage cubby you got some speakers seat belts there is a power outlet but it is clear in the back back here all right let's talk about powertrain the power comes from a 3.5 liter v6 with vtech i know all the honda guys are probably over there circle jerking vtech that's like a go-to word for them um, but it produced 210 horsepower, which was a really healthy figure for the time. Um, but now we have to talk about the downfall. This engine is bulletproof. It has nothing to do with the downfall. The downfall lies with the transmission. You want to stay away from the four-speed transmission. They were not reliable at all. This one has a five-speed in it, which they didn't start putting the five-speeds in until 2002. For whatever reason, mine has a five-speed Things were so bad, Mike Spencer, he was a spokesman for Honda, um, came out and said that bearings could break apart inside the transmission, shattering fragments of metal can clog fluid passages, making the transmission shift erratically. Honda responded by extending the warranty on the transmissions to seven years or 100,000 miles. Okay, so driving the uh, 2001 Honda Odyssey, I, I just want to give you a, I just want to apologize. This video has kind of been like sort of all over the place. I'm still trying to figure out how I want to format my videos. Um, I haven't found out how I want to do it just yet, um, but I really appreciate you staying to the driving part of this. Honestly, this, um, this video was cut, obviously it was cut a bunch of different times three days actually it took me to film this video um that was three days more than i wanted to film it but i, I had a lot going on during this one like i mentioned i alluded to earlier in the video that I, I have a cabinet business i have a cabinet business a photography business and um i'm more i more or less do anything i can to make a buck but cars are really my passion and i always wanted to do something automotively I'm not a very good salesperson um, as far as cars go. This is how I figured I could be around cars and not have to sell them or work on them because I'm not really a mechanic either. Back to it, the uh, the driving part of it. What What's it like to drive? Um, it actually feels like a long wheelbase hot hatchback in a lot of different areas, especially if you shift it manually, which we'll get to in another episode. I'll probably upload that one later on today. It, it just feels like you're driving a bigger front wheel drive car, to be frank and honest about it. It's not a performance car, and my mom's got a 2001 Ford truck. It handles way better than the Ford truck does. Um, it's an F-150. This actually feels more powerful than the F-150. And um, you could drive this and use this as a cheap alternative to a truck because I don't know if you've realized the truck market really sucks right now. Well, car market in general, but trucks are expensive. We've all seen these ads where this, for lack of better term, SAP wants to sell their Toyota Tacoma, has a million bajillion miles on it, is rusted clear through, is broken half, and they're asking $10,000 for this pile. I honestly don't know what kind of drugs these people are on that are asking that kind of money for a vehicle they obviously can't drive home. But tell me, I'm not the only one that sees these ads, am I? Y you see them too, right? You gotta remember, 2001 wasn't a very good year automotively. There wasn't... Everything was kind of bland, to be, uh, to be frank. It's a lot like it is now-ish horsepower race is going on now just like it was in the 60s but there wasn't anything that really was um, very luxurious very um, everything was very eh and bland to be honest the last review I did 
I had a scoring system. The more I think about it, I don't really want to do a scoring system because then I'll have to go back and I'm not a numbers guy. The only numbers that really pertain to me are, you know, zero to 60 time, economy numbers, final price tag. You're watching this because you want to know what is a good cheap van to buy in the year 2021 or beyond. And this is a good contender if it has the five speed transmission, which formally came out in 2002 and later. If you could get a good deal on the next generation, the third generation Honda Odyssey, I would go with that one. But there's pros and cons to that generation as well, just as well with anything else out there, to be frank. There's pros and cons to everything. Overall, the interior in this is very eh. Two trim levels, LX and EX. They didn't they didn't make any other trim levels. There's no leather interior package that you can get with this one. The only differences really were you get a CD changer on the EX and the power sliding doors. Other than that, they're both about the same. The interior quality, you know, these seats aren't that comfortable. They're not like Lincoln's pillow side cloth upholstery seats that they offered back in the 80s. But they did help, they did hold up after 20 years. They still look great. There's no rips. I have a 2004 Honda Odyssey as well, and it's a lot smoother than this. I'm gonna show you what it's like to manually shift this and do one hard acceleration. sounds ridiculous to say out loud uh, to drive a, a minivan essentially manually but you'd be surprised I blew the doors off of a Dodge uh, 1500 diesel at the stoplight he just looked defeated it was it was a great moment it's like how does it make you feel to get beat by a soccer bomb mobile yeah so those are my those are my thoughts I hope you enjoyed the review I I apologize this one's kind of more all over the place than I'd like it to be but like I said I it took me three days to record thank you for joining me and that is what it was like please remember to like share and subscribe to the channel it really means a lot to me till next time toodaloo